Okay, here's a good little diagram talking about the concept of external respiration and internal respiration. We're going to be talking about today about the things about partial pressure. All right, now external respiration happens in the lungs. Let's look at that first. You'll see here from the top that the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli sac is given a figure of 100, which is high. Compare that to the partial pressure of oxygen, um, which is in the blood capillaries surrounding the alveoli of 40, and that's low. That big difference between that 100 and that 40 then means that that oxygen will diffuse, because it's a big diffusion gradient, from the alveoli into the blood capillaries that surround it. So here's the, here's the, the, the pressure of oxygen in, in the capillaries now, so it's now 100. We'll take all of that as it travels all the way through the body, and it travels to where we're going to have internal respiration. Now you can see here in the arteries um, coming down to the blood, you've got a partial pressure of oxygen of 100. Let's compare that figure to the bottom here of the partial pressure of oxygen in the muscle tissues, which is only 40. Now that's low. Now as with the, the principle of external respiration, because you've got a big diffusion gradient difference between that 100 and that 40, the oxygen's going to diffuse really easily from the, the capillaries in the muscles into the muscle tissue itself. Dealing with carbon dioxide, what's happening with carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide comes back. What you can see is that carbon dioxide coming back from the muscle tissue has got a partial pressure of 46. There's that 46 again as that blood then travels up to the lungs. Compare that high partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 46 with the low partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 40 in the alveoli and you can see how the diffusion gradient of carbon dioxide will go from the blood into the alveoli and will then be breathed out.